an amazing instrument and has developed into an incredible voice in today's music. So many types of guitars, so many styles of playing, all sorts of gear. How does one make their voice be heard as a guitarist? My name is Jeff Floro and welcome to All About Guitar, where we talk tone, we talk technique, we talk gear. Where we discover how we can become better musicians in a world of constantly changing technologies. Where we take a good look at everything guitar. And sometimes not exactly guitar, but just as important. So we can be more successful as a musician in today's music scene. So sit back and relax, and let's explore all about guitar. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to All About Guitar. Um, we have a great show for you tonight. I'm really honored to have the String Revolution with me. Um, I learned about him from my very good friend, Janet, who was on my show earlier. And uh, this week I was going through the album, their newest album, which is called uh, Stringborn, and I'm going to flash it up on the camera. And uh, it's amazing stuff, what they're doing. Uh, and uh, I just want to welcome everybody. Janet right here. Uh, Daniel. Hello, everybody. And uh, Art. Hello. And uh, Marcus. Hello. So welcome, everybody. I was going to just play a clip, but I think it's better just to let them just play. So I'm going to let them play right now, and you'll get an idea what they're about. This is a song from our upcoming new record. Been out in the it's called Red Drops.
Got to put my mic on. That's awesome. <laughs> this is great. And I love the way the interplay between the classical guitar and the steel string guitars. It's very refreshing and it works real. The blend is very, very, very nice. Now, yeah, go ahead and feel free to move your mics up so we can hear from you guys. Um, I'm going to go down the line. I'll start with Art on the far side and just tell us a little bit about your background. You might want to lean into the mic a little bit. Um, I started playing guitar when I was probably in middle, I think late elementary school. Just been playing on and off for all these years and met Jango and the guys a few years ago. Um, I mostly do singer-songwriter stuff, but uh, this project was kind of interesting just because it felt like a really good exercise in how to fit all these guitars together. Mm -hmm. uh, usually you try to keep it to one or two when you're playing in a band and, and it's it's just it's a nice challenge for, to try to compose all these things and, and write together and like you noticed you know how to make these things fit together um, but yeah I mean um, I, I just I play a lot around LA um, I also record do a lot of engineering um, but yeah it's mostly my background is just playing mainly acoustic guitar it seems to kind of be the thing I can control the most just mm -hmm. by playing. You know, I really like the interaction of how I can get things to sound as opposed to, you know, using an electric. Um, but yeah. What were your influences, and did oh, did you study? Were you? Uh... No, it's so funny because I don't really remember learning how to play much. Like I I play I took a few lessons when I was younger, but it was mainly like really easy ska stuff. Mm -hmm. And. I actually go through in my head a lot and, and kind of try to figure out how I got to where I'm at because I don't remember practicing much or playing much. Um, and I use a lot of alternate tunings and I don't even remember developing that kind of style. Um, I don't remember drugs. <laughs> 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 not, not, not much drug use either. But uh, yeah, just, I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting because I don't, I don't feel like I learned how to, like I put in that time to learn, you know, like sitting here now. Um, my influences early on were a lot of 50s and 60s music and the neighborhood kids got me into ska and stuff but after that it's just kind of been trying to get the most out of an acoustic that I can um, and I had a project with a singer a few years ago and it was just the two of us so that challenged me a lot to try to be as creative as possible with just the two of us you know and you can't just keep doing the same chords so I mm -hmm. try to do a lot of things where I would you know be playing open tunings and doing lead lines while doing rhythmic stuff and uh, so that's kind of helped me in this band too, because it's kind of a little different than, um, you know, than what what everybody else does. Now, and this last song that you played, what was the name of that again? Red uh, drops. drops. Red drops. Um, the uh, I are you using a standard tuning, or do you use? Yeah, it's a standard tuning. Okay, so you're using it on that. Yeah. And then, uh, tell us a little bit about this guitar and what other guitars that you use, because this is a beauty. Yeah, this is this is a, a new one that I got. I think almost about a year ago. I uh, went down to Taylor and, and picked it out of a couple that they had there. It's an 810 CE. It's a beautiful sounding guitar. It's actually not on the record. Um, on the record, I had my original Taylor, which is like a 110, I think, uh, which is mostly what I still write a lot of my stuff on. But this one, I'm really excited to record it. It's a, we all played it there, and it just felt like the one. You, know, we you tried stepped to, up yeah. from 110 to an 810. Yeah, it's <laughs> a big jump. What's the yeah. 110? What's the back and size on it? It's spruce, I presume. I, I actually don't know. I've got it maybe 15 years ago, and it was wow. just like what I could afford I think at the time. It's spruce. Yeah, it's spruce. What but what afford. is it like mahogany on the back? I think so, or or, or rosewood. The yeah. back of it looks a lot like the side of Daniel's guitar. The sides. Mm -hmm. of it. It's kind of got that similar feel and texture to it. The A10 is in the. Post if it's that type, that's like a mahogany type of finish. Yeah, yeah. so that it looks like that that type of grain. This thing's yeah. beautiful though. Yeah, and this thing plays so well. Just like it's, it's just a pleasure to play. The other one's kind of been through a lot and, and been abused a bit. So, you know. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Yeah. Thank you, Taylor Guitar. Yeah, yes. thank you, Taylor. And <laughs> Truly Janet road proven with yeah. this group. I know Janet. Was, we at, at Nam. I was crying when I saw that guitar next oh, Nam. Oh yeah. yeah. So let's, let's not talk about that. Yes, no. Uh, next on the list is Mar Marcus. Marcus, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, my background, um, I actually, s well, I started guitar also quite early, mm -hmm. I think. 
I think it was like ten, uh, twelve. Um, I started to study guitar as well. Um, I did that in uh, Austria and in Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was very much into classic and Spanish Where are you mm-hmm. music. Austria. <laughs> I'm from Austria. Um, so yeah, then, then I did flamenco as well. I did when I was in Barcelona. At that time, I, sp- I played a lot of different, like, in different groups, tango, like tango groups, or like, yeah, everything all over the place. And uh, when I came, and I, and I composed as well, which was the reason why I came uh, to the U.S. because I was working on film, film music projects, um, which I, st- I still do as well. But uh, then I met. Danny and then I met the whole crew and since then you know, it's just a, a blast to, to play together and to get all those um, you know the different ideas since we have all different backgrounds right? yeah so that's that's the interesting part and so uh, also difficult different music styles we come from and then once we, we come together you know somebody has an idea that hey that's great it's like, oh, no that's shit, that's shit you know? <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, like filters it out in the end. Uh, and so- sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm not sure if that stuff works. You know? And then they were people love that stuff. Some, some of the songs, every, everybody has different favorites, right? Right. And then I'm like, R- really, do I like, do I like that more than this? <laughs> like, is it, is that, that's, it's just so interesting, you know? And it's like, mm-hmm. it surprised me. And then I said, okay, you, you can't do anything really wrong as long as you love it. As long as you know, put everything you you think is good, uh, and you do your best work. Now, w- your influences were all classical and flamenco. No, as a kid, or did you were you a rock and roller like everybody else? No, actually, as a I was everything acoustic. I did like uh, listen to a lot of Irish music. Mm. Uh, Paco de Lucia was my my biggest hero, so I was trying, but. I transcribed uh, Aranjuez, Concierto de Aranjuez, but the Paco Lucia version of it, w- w- whatever I could. So that was that was my hero. Mm-hmm. And then I studied with uh, the couple of people he played with, Manuel Canizares in, in Barcelona, which was, was a blast. Um, and, uh, but then, uh, you know, I started with classic guitar, and acoustic, then I did flamenco, then I did a little bit jazz. So I was kind of like, since everything is interesting, couldn't really decide what, what what I want to do, so it was a mix of different. But my main thing, uh, I think, is just like everything with nylon strings, and and uh, that's actually my go-to. Now, what uh, guitar are you using here now? This one is a is a German one. It's called Dieter Hense uh, from 1978, and he built it actually just for people to who want to record something, because mm-hmm. you know? it doesn't really project the sound that far. Uh, which of course doesn't matter because we, we can like with the mic inside, so that's it's okay. Uh, with the pickup, yeah. Um, is that a, a LR bags in there? R- right, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Right, so. Now, is that what you used on the recordings, or do you use another gu- other guitars? No, this this one is was used for the recordings. Okay, and then what do you use live? Also live. I oh, use so you just you I just I just want to have the because it's just the, the one I'm most comfortable with. Uh, and the sound, you know, once I change the sound, you know, there, there, there's no, no reason to uh, change the sound on the stage. Then on, mm-hmm. I want to make it the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As a record. As a record, yeah. right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, we're in a minute, I'm going to, when I play some of the clips, listen to, you can hear the influence. One of the things I noticed about what you guys do that I don't hear much from other groups, like, you know, is... Uh, in classical music, imitation, where you'll start a line, you'll start a line, and you, you, you go through that, you hear that a lot in there, which is really interesting. It's great sound, especially the way your your albums are mixed because you can it, that you take advantage of the stereo yeah, perspective. You hide. <laughs> and it's very cool, but I noticed that you have the, and we'll, we'll play that in a second, but I want to get through everybody's background. So Daniel, tell me about you. I started playing piano on second or third grade and the main influence was a cassette tape we had in our family car and it was the Beatles best of the, the oh blue yeah. and the red yeah, the double red bubble red yeah and so there was uh, the great Beatles tunes that brought me to music but 
to change to guitar, it was when my father brought home two Ry Cooder soundtracks, Paris, Texas and Crossroads, plus the two Eric Clapton records, 461 Ocean Boulevard and Slow Hand. Mm -hmm. So that's when I thought, oh, I, guitar is better than piano, so <laughs> let's learn guitar. Mm -hmm. And I started playing the electric guitar because acoustic guitar didn't seem so sexy so <laughs> for a girl's purposes or whatever it, it looked like it's more rock and roll to play the electric guitar and I started playing a lot of blues and rock and roll then some classic rock and then I grew with the, with the, the electric guitar history so from classic rock into hair metal into more progressive metal and it was all the the faster, bigger, louder guys from Joe Satriani to Eddie Van Halen, Paul Gilbert, these guys in the late 80s, early 90s. And then I detected the passion for uh, acoustic instruments. So I started playing mandolin, dobro, um, also a bit banjo, a bit steel guitar. And the love for that came on two trips to the United States when I was 18 years old. So I drove through the whole west with a friend and we only got a few country stations in and that was the time when i fell in love with, with american country music and steel guitar and chicken <laughs> i was forced chicken picking and open string licks etc and from then on it was uh, a lot of slide guitar uh, acoustic instruments as i said dobro mandolin banjo. so where are you originally from i'm from switzerland switzerland it's okay. not bluegrass country <laughs> <laughs> it's green grass so but somehow the, the joy of american roots music got me then no that's uh that's interesting that I, i'm waiting to see now the string revolution basically you're it's all guitars right oh, yeah. but yeah. with all those other stringed instruments it's tempting to throw a mandolin or something yeah i, I used to i used my national style and dobro on the record for two mm -hmm. songs so it's my favorite instrument actually we're, we're not it's against you know other stringed instruments yeah. Yeah, well, I can I can see mandolin in your future, yeah, and and, yeah. and uh, definitely, uh, but uh, no, that's interesting. It, it, uh, that's a again, if you're you know what we're listening right now, how diverse all the influences of all you just the the three of you alone, it's the whole gamut. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And then let's get to Janet. I'll keep it brief. <laughs> <laughs> and besides your influences, also I want you to mention too how you put the group, how you put sure. this thing together. Uh, well, I started very young. First of all, at six, um, playing uh, folk and classical, and then uh, my brother was playing guitar at the same time. He wanted to play electric, and we heard about this great teacher, Randy Rhodes, mm -hmm. and um, he was teaching out of his mom's uh, school, which happened to be very close to my my parents' house. So uh, my brother started taking from him. I continued on acoustic, and then by the time I was nine, I was begging and begging to move on to electric. So uh, we were both lucky to study under Randy Rhodes back in the 70s, uh, before, of course, he got the gig with Ozzy. Uh, I was heavily influenced by what my brother was li listening to, which was Zeppelin, Beatles, Bowie, Hart, uh, you know, a little bit of Aerosmith, Black Sabbath, all those classic rock bands, including some singer-songwriters, Joni Mitchell, James Taylor. It was really ran the gamut. And, you know, my mom bought the original Sgt. Pepper's record, which I was obsessed with, and that still to this day is my favorite record. Um, and the, But then I'll listen to Zeppelin, which is totally different music, you know. Uh, but uh, the songwriting from the Beatles and the, the instrumental prowess for the for the guys in Zeppelin um, and I of course was playing guitar at the same time and I was just like I want to be like that I want to be like that you know and um, I got good fast you know I was I was liked it I was that was the only thing I was good at I tried sports <laughs> I tried <laughs> tap dancing I tried karate tap none of the tap dancing uh -huh. it was like terrible I did I couldn't do it and then pole, pole I found yeah, pole dancing <laughs> <laughs> inappropriate <laughs> um, no I would I was good at it and I, I was getting good fast and I liked it 
and no one was telling me to practice. So I, I think it gave me an extreme amount of self-confidence growing up uh, you know, in a family of two older brothers and I was the only girl. Um, and Randy could care less if I was a girl. I mean, you know, and he was most encouraging. So I got into, you know, neighborhood bands very early. And then in high school, I got into this hair metal band called Precious Metal, all girl band. And it was the early 80s, like Daniel was talking about. And we, we got lucky, we got signed. And that really started my professional career, you know. And I was with that band for a good six, almost seven years. Went through two major label deals, Capital Polygram, met a lot of people, got my feet wet in the real music business. And then after that, I went on to play with Lindsey Buckingham and Air Supply and Meredith Brooks as a hired gun uh, after Precious Metal finally called it quits. And during that time, I also was starting to do my own stuff, singing and writing, and uh, I was, you know, putting out my own records, kind of following the path of Ani DeFranco, the one woman band kind of thing. Yeah. Get in my car, She's drive good. to the shows, drive all over the country alone, you know, <laughs> it's like coffee houses, opening for people. And I still do some of that. I, I have since taken my career over to Europe, which has been very good for me the last 10 years. But um, as far as, you know, putting the band together, really what happened was my time in, in Buckingham's band it was his first solo band he put together, and he really wanted to uh, have every single guitar sound on that particular record that he put out, which was called Out of the Cradle. So he hired five guitar players. And the arrangements that he created and the mix and everything, it was just like I was so impressed how he put it together. And um, I think it really affected me. You know, cut to like 22 years later, I was still busy doing my own, I'm still busy doing my own solo thing, uh, but I, it was time to start something different, and I just thought, you know what, I would really like to do something that isn't just me, and that focuses on the guitar, but isn't just another instrumental band, per se. Um, what could we do that's different with the guitars that could make it sound like a whole band, but not with drums and bass? And I thought, oh, you know, I've seen people do percussive stuff on acoustic guitars or whatever. You know, I've seen baritones used as bass lines, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna put an ad in Craigslist. <laughs> and that's seriously what I did, because uh, I know some fantastic guitar players out here. It's not about that, it was more about, I wanna meet new people. People I've never played with before, people I don't know, people I don't know anything of their background, anything. And I took a chance and I put, I, I really spent time putting the ad together, right, writing it out to attract certain people. And what was very interesting though was that not one girl answered my ad. That was very interesting. That's totally open to having another girl in the band, but not one girl answered. They were all guys. Well, what did you say in the ad? I said male or female. No, no, but I mean, oh, in the, the ad, style I of said, music, you probably. Yeah, I'm looking to get uh, to put together an, an instrument, all guitar instrumental band that I think it, I said that mimics a full band sound. Do you remember, Art, what it was? It was something, it was something like, something like that, like yeah. that yeah. where we can create drums and bass and lead lines from only a guitar. And, I, and then I was like, responsible and professionals only apply. But I meant professional in attitude, not that you had to you know, have played with tons of people. Just more like, you know, yeah, I'm serious yeah. about this, you know. And I, and I think I said a few things like, I have major credits, you know, I wanna take this band as far as we can go. And, and, you know, there were a couple of not such great responses and, but. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, well, I, I, because I. You know what I didn't want? I didn't want a shredder. I got right. a lot of shredders. And uh, they, they were great players. Well, Craigslist yeah. tends of course. To, like music connection. You yeah, connect. yeah. And I uh, knew I was gonna get that, but I wasn't looking for that. And I did I think I said something focusing on acoustic or something, but um I didn't want that and I wanted I want I like the flash and show off our skills, but I want it to be about the song. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we don't have a singer per se. There is one song that we mm -hmm. have singing on. But the the singing comes from the guitar. Yeah. So Yes, I wanted you to have skills and be flashy a, a little bit, but I really wanted somebody who knew what it took to put together a good song. 
So yeah, I think the key thing is your composition. Right. Of, yeah, and and uh, ha and expertise. someone who was open, flexible, uh, not gonna you know try to take over the whole project. You know, of course that's always hard. Personalities and stuff. I mean, I spent six years in an all-girl band. Think about that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think he answered first, then Daniel, and I. We were having trouble finding a fourth member. And That's you right. said he, you, you knew, know, I, you knew, I knew Marcus, good. yeah. And then I called, or we had a beer, and I said, mm -hmm. "Are you interested?" In, right. No, you you right. said, "Let's play some guitar together." And I said, "Well, I have something more specific. Let's yeah, come for a rehearsal." Yeah, right. And yeah. I, I really how, did you, how did you guys meet? We yeah. met through um, well, we, a, we we have a common, common friend in New York. <laughs> we have we have a common friend in New York. Yeah. and uh, I. When I when I came to the U.S., I actually was in in New York. I was, was working for three months in the post production studio, and uh, because you know, just trying to do something. And then uh, I met the, the our friend there, and then I moved to to L.A. And he came. I think when, when, when did he arrive? 2015, 14, Two, 2014. 14. But I, but I was there already a couple yeah. of months earlier. Yeah. So so she, but then then she hooked us up hooked and us we up went for here, right. for a beer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really like the fact that. Marcus uh, played nylon, or that was his main instrument. Because I, I, although I was open to all steel string guitars, I, I liked that, and I thought, oh, that's going to be a nice texture. And and you know, he plays dobro, and like I said, we're open to other string instruments. But it, it's and his background, I think, is the most extreme, different from from ours, you know. And he also, you know, is. But it doesn't clash. He went to it, it school. Really works. <laughs> you yeah. went to guitar it, school. I went to school too. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I, I did. <laughs> I went to the school of rock and roll. The school of rock. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's, that's, that is interesting. Yeah. No, that's yeah, and it's it, it, it's interesting. Uh, well, well, let me play a clip. Uh, I edited this together, so there's a, there. This one was tricky to put together because there's just so much, and it was a longer. It, the the songs are what was difficult in this doing this show and picking the clips is because probably because of your classical background it develops over time so the song might be three or four minutes but it's not like verse chorus verse chorus yep. it's like you got this first movement second movement type of thing where it, it embellishes and then so i'm listening okay that looks good i'll keep that oh wait a minute okay Oh no, he's doing something here, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. Well, we, we, oh we no, and then I'm looking, and it's like three minutes, and no, 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 and it's not a criticism. But, oh, yeah. but it, so what I did is I, I really hard cut this, and uh, but I, uh, one of the things I really like about this album is all the intros are just so cool. What you guys do, and then it, it develops into the song. So what I did is this is called Flying Trumpets, and uh, this is off of Stringborn, which I'm gonna flash up here. And uh, so I have the opening, and then I cut to the lead, oh. and uh, then it, I let it take out, go out, and it plays the theme. So you get an idea of the structure. So let me play this for you, and um, I think you guys will like this, and it'll kind of show you why it's so hard to define what they do. So here's flying trumpets.
So you can hear there all the. That's a very cool. That's a very. Their very eyes popped out when they heard that edit. It's just like whoa. Wait a minute. Can, but now, it was, can they it, hear it was, that on it Facebook it was, Live or they, they can't? Hear yeah, yeah. Oh, all of that's that? that's all running through. Oh, the, great. So they're hearing a, the clips. It's a very good edit there. Yeah. yeah. Thank that you very much. Like, you know, like, uh, wait, wait, wait. What? Straight what? to your guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I had to use Pro Tools on that one. Thing, <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, no, it was an interesting sound. Now, who's doing the main lead? I did the solo, and then these two guys, Marcus and Art, do the Andrew the melody Marcus. after yeah. the solo. Yeah. And then I and you're playing. Be you're kind of comping around him when he does the solo. There's like some little like comp chords. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's because right, right. it sounded it sounded yeah, gut yeah. string. Yeah, yeah. And then you're doing the baritone. baritone. I love that slide. It sounds like a real bass. It, you know, it's not. Six that blows baritone. me away. Boom, 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 boom. Now that's my electric baritone, uh, and that's made by a Czech uh, guy, Macho mm -hmm. is his name, and he, he custom made that for me. Well, that's got a great sound. I mean, it, it sounds like a bass. I'm like, wait a minute, now what, what's going on here? And then all of the little percussive things that you're doing now. This one, you're not as you're not tapping the guitars and stuff as much as some of the other songs, but yeah. right. very rhythm oriented, which I noticed and. It's not as much syncopation, but like counterpoint, I notice that's things that happen with you guys. And I'm gonna show, I'm gonna play another clip real cl quick and then we'll dig in more. Real, but first, when you did the lead, what uh, you flanged that? Was that flanged? I it think was... it's flanger on it, yeah. 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 Okay. So the, our mixing engineer, Matt Hyde from London, did a great job. He came up with certain sound ideas and so it was You, you know, Matt, not... Matt Hyde, um, engineered uh or mi mixed uh rodrigo e gabriella's 11 11 record and we're, oh. we're huge fans of of them and we specifically reached out to him to, to mix this record and we're completely surprised that he said <laughs> yes <laughs> and, uh, oh no that's you know, a this first of all i was surprised he even answered my email uh but yeah he you know he listened to just some of our demos and he's like I will absolutely work yeah with no I think that it's it's a challenge and it's I mean to get the balance and listen how clear everything is I mean I can it hear all the parts yeah. Yeah. and yeah, there's a lot a going on there and as an as a producer engineer you can you you can tell I mean I'm sure you appreciate that I mean oh, it's just for a, sure. we we had a couple other people do some uh, try some mixes on him and Matt's just was like the right fit he kind of got where we're going and then he could push it a little bit too, you know, yeah. give us a, a big sound because we don't want it to feel too laid back and just kind of like, you know, yeah. soft. De in dental office music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Matt was able to kind of give it that. That oomph. Yeah. Because yeah. he has, I think, a background with like metal bands and stuff too. Now, did he just mix it or did he record you guys too? No, he oh, mixed the, it. The recording. Okay. He mixed it. He's in London. Yeah. yeah. So you did. The, you guys did your own. No, no, no. The, the, the recording we did in, in the studio here in LA. Sonic, uh, fuel? Sonic, Sonic, Sonic fuel. Sonic fuel and uh, Keith. Um, what's his last name? Uh, oh, Krishna. Oh, it's on there. <laughs> uh, Keith. Yeah. Keith. Okush, Okush, it's uh, Japanese. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can never, never pronounce, can't it. pronounce his name. Keith if, if, he, if he listens Okush. to it, Ren, oh, sorry for that. <laughs> sorry, Keith. <laughs> sorry, Keith. <laughs> sorry, we love he, you, he Keith. Will, he, he will now cancel our next recording. <laughs> I've canceled your next. <laughs> Keith. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, Krishna. Oh, Krishna. 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 Yeah, he, did the he did the, re the engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Did, was, it clo it. was it close mic or did you guys use the room? No, no close, close mic. mic. Close close mic. Yeah. Plus a DI signal for every guitar. Yeah, we have mics oh, wow. and DIs. Two and mics stereo, and, and stereo DI. Mics. And we, we, we recorded it simultaneously like in three different uh, uh, boozers. Yeah. yeah, we played we played live yeah, yeah, with right. minimal but overdubs. We, maybe a but when you were mic'd, you're mic'd in stereo? He yeah, used two mics on everybody. Yeah, mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's stereo though. Was it stereo? No, no it was just two different sources. Oh, yeah, okay. it was a pencil mic and then a, and then just a line condenser. But he, uh -huh. he didn't keep those on separate tracks. Yeah, those were separate tracks. Yeah. So he could pull yeah. it yeah. out yeah. if he yeah. wanted. Yeah. 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 So Matt had options. Oh, he had a lot. Yeah, of options. So he <laughs> actually, so you had actually three tracks for every guitar. Exactly. Yes. Which yeah, is yeah. good. Which is good. No, he said that that gave him a lot of things to work with, and that really do what he wanted to do. Yeah, you could spend time dialing. Yeah. 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 Stuff. I mean, the, the tricky part is, of course, since it's all guitars, right? So he has to decide which guitar is ha has which frequency and like what guitar is doing what at which specific at point, what right? <laughs> Especially since we also change some parts. So I might just play the melody at one point and then I'll change and like play 
play some, mm -hmm. some, some rhythm parts. And if the rhythm part is has n another frequency, then he has to like, he, had, he did a lot of work. Uh, and some know, sometimes the, somebody would be playing a percussive part and then switch to a guitar. And you practice. did that live. You didn't separate. You didn't overlap. Nope, I did that in one track, yeah, one take. Yeah. Now it's interesting because I, I, it would be interesting to put you in a like a good room, like one of the main rooms, like Capitol, one of the bigger rooms, oh. and just mic you live. But it it has its advantages and disadvantages. I can see the close micing gives you the separation. So you can he gave you know you can hear it in the album it it's all around you, and and that's important especially for the the intricate parts that you guys are doing. But it'd be interesting. See, it'd be tougher on you guys because you'd have to balance it yourselves. Well, in we terms do that live. You know, we we try to get that at, right. That but live you're going through the PA it. right. You're a yeah, lot of it's no, driven yeah. by the 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 pick. So somebody's yeah. mixing you. Yes. Yeah. It's tricky. I mean, it's tricky for, for this, you to go from guys. tapping and then go to playing yeah, and, exactly. to you know, some of the stuff that. that you're doing, that's a, you know, but it would be interesting to see, to pull just because these are beautiful guitars and, you know, let them breathe a little bit. It would be, it would be fun. But let me play another clip real quick to show you some of the, this is a uh, uh, Billie Jean and I just, it's just the opening so cool. And, uh, I want to talk a little bit how you put this together to get an idea of how you guys arrange. So let me play this real quick and um, you guys, uh, everybody, are take a listen. I just yeah. love that. I, I'm, I'm listening, but I'm also answering people on Facebook Live. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. didn't want you to think I was rude. No, 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 no. We're getting some nice And that's messages. true. Yeah, there's people <laughs> that are chatting uh, on the Facebook Live. It's really some, some, somebody from Bakersfield, right? Good yeah. three, four. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Where's that coming from? I think it's my oh, it's, oh, is it yeah. that's called oh, delay I see. <laughs> now okay. first of all that who was doing the break that the two of us she's yeah. doing the harmonics and I the, love and that I that is so cool percussion that's right yeah that's like um, that that is like, um, <laughs> 
It's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that and then the from? second one you have the, with the phased, it's phased. It's yeah, yeah, that's yeah, also her with the effect on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a very cool right riff. Here. No, it's interesting again that shows what I what I hear in there too is which is unique is is just the whole groove of it is it's really there. It's 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 as funky as a standard band, but and 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 I, the first thing I was thinking is now how did he do that bass drum? Because that <laughs> bass drum is it was, it was this guitar, but Matt supported it with a bit more low end in the mix. Okay, because yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. that's got to be a cajon. Or no, no, it's, yeah, it's yeah, this yeah. guitar and Matt at heavy, heavy, heavy uh, it's just low like end, very, very, very clever. Free, uh, yeah, EQ, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> just uh, and this uh, arrangement is just beautiful. It opens up with this like really cool build up of the. Thank you. Of the theme, and then you know, it sets up that little rhythm thing, and it's kind you of know, Marcus teaser. brought it in, and we're like, you know what, this is cool. Um, of course, we don't we don't want to be a covers band, but it's always cool to, to do a cover in a unique way. And he brought it in, and we just put our thing on it, you know, and made some changes to it, and kind of you in that song, especially, you can really hear a lot of our influences individually. He's, we also added this whole other solo section at the end where we're like, you know, there's a little bit of Randy Rhodes there. You know? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a clip in a minute that really shows the true roots. I'm just gonna say it that no, uh, you know, it's a great clip. It's a it's a great song. But no, really, um, the thing that was interesting, you guys collectively arrange, or does somebody come in with an arrangement? Well, both uh, it, it both depends things. On what it depends yeah. on yeah. some. Sometimes we have already some arrangements. We bring it along and say, "Okay, let's let's try that." But at the same time, since we get together and have fun to play, we just we just start to play. Yeah, start have so somebody has an idea. Somebody says, "Yeah, let's go with it's this." It's a one. jam. That that's time, really yeah. that's really a cool thing when that happens. That's like the magic dust. Somebody yeah. spraying magic dust on us, and somebody comes up with something and. You know, we, we no, can it's be a, blunt. I, I can sound like that, you know. And they, you know, a different band member might say, get out of here, Janet, you know, don't talk to me that way. But, or I might say, that's really cool. Or they might say, don't play that, Janet. You know, we're, I mean. No, it's, it's a good frank, mixture. It's a know? good mixture. And that's the thing. You need that to, that it, that interaction, you know, both. Yeah, I like this, both. No, let's try think, this. You, you know, know that works. I think what in this band, we all know the power of the song. So in the end, it's what is best for the song, not what is going to show off my playing. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know? No, that's exactly. definitely the, the song. is. And, the, and, that, and that's not to say that I don't sometimes say, well, we need to throw in a little flashy stuff here and there just to make it fun. But that's not, that's not really the yeah. end goal here. The end goal is how can we arrange Especially we, this? we are we're not, not just two guitars, right? We, yeah, we're if, you, if you If you have two guitars, it's kind of like, I don't say, you know, if two guitars play well, it's great. Uh, but it's more difficult to arrange it in a way, so it's it's yeah. still interesting for everybody to play, you know, because that's it's a main, main goal to keep it interesting, uh, and you know to to, to have all the frequency co uh, f frequencies covered, and you know that's that's the challenge. To and, and, and not step that's on each other. Well, that's a lot know, going le on. Less is more, you know. Often well, there's a lot in there, but it's still well, clear. Well, for instance, on red drops that we open the show with, I mean, my part is. You know, and any one of my yeah. young kids students could play it. It's just, yeah. I mean, and then I, that was doubled. I think they did. You do that? Too? No, no, I'm I doing that. Simple high voicing. He's doing kind of the melody. Wait, who's doing the melody? Marcus. Right. Marcus. right. Marcus. He's doing like a. Rhythm. Somebody else was doubling. I, I heard no, was, I just no? did the basses with the, uh, within sometimes. that picking pattern. Yeah, it was my, it was, I thought it was like an octave type. Of yeah, well, it depends. There were was some some parts where yeah. we. Did. That's only in the yeah, bridge, but bridge. throughout the whole song, I'm just doing a real simple. Sort yeah, no, of it works. Yeah, yeah, no, it works good. Now, this one, I assume the big influence on this was uh, Daniel. So I'm just gonna play this. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You'll know what it is. <laughs> but take a listen to this because this is the true influence of uh, String Revolution right here. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
so, uh, I, mean, so I, I assume Daniel brought yeah, that song. Yeah. That's an old tune I composed with my uh, guitar teacher back then at the Music Academy. He was a German born, became Swiss. And he was a fantastic country, or still is a fantastic country guitar, country guitar player. And he taught me some tricks of playing country guitar. Well, those, picking, those licks were ben awesome. Rolls, et cetera. And I fell in love with that type of playing and we did that tune together. And then I brought it in and we arranged some parts. We uh, were adding additional yeah, parts so, on it. So it's, it's, and, 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 and showcase. Uh, no, you, it, was, it was awesome in art. Both of them. I mean, it's just perfect. And you, what you were doing, giving me that dirt and the That's grit on the guitar. Yeah. She digs into right the guitar. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know. I mean, it does. Uh, you're right in, a ca- in, in the sense that when we take our solos, it does showcase us, uh, except for Marcus, who's playing the baritone. And now, just when, no showcase. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just like, boom, yeah, I'm just right. playing around. Boom, yeah. 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 But no, it, it, I, and also, too, the reason I wanted to play it is because it just shows, like, that's like in left field from some of the other yeah, stuff totally. that you're doing, yeah. Yeah. but it shows the versatility and the skill. Because that's, the, you know, Chicken Scratch is, it, it's, you know, there's chicken good guys, yeah. chicken picking, yeah. well, I call it scratching, but, uh, yeah. scratching. but it was, uh, you just basically, there are good players and there are not so good players and you guys are just nailing it and it's just, and it works well in this group. Yeah. It was a challenge yeah. actually yeah. doing that one. <laughs> well, I told you we'd run out of time. It's already, oh, wow. it's almost time. But oh, before wow. we, cause I want to let you go, they're going to play another song from the upcoming album in a minute. We're going to have, they're going to take us out with that. But uh, real quick, um, www.thestringrevolution.com is their website. There's all sorts of cool stuff up there to check out. But give us uh, where you guys are playing. We're playing uh, uh, a really cool show April 27th. That's next Friday. Not this Friday, but a week from Friday, April 27th, at the uh, NAM Headquarters Museum of Making Music, which is in Carlsbad. I realize it's far out there for L.A. people, but... You know, if you go early in the day, take off work, you know, walk around Carl's Bad Village. Uh, we go on around seven or eight, something like that. And then uh, we have another date coming up here in town at Boulevard Music uh, in Culver City. Boulevard yeah. Music, Culver City, uh, September 15th. 15th. Yeah. yeah. And that might fun. be more convenient for, for folks, but right. they're all, everything's listed on our website. And any idea when the new album's going to come out? We hope September. Well, we're just going to have to have you guys back in September. Uh, They're going to be back in September when we get the album. Uh, I want to thank you guys, all of you, for coming on the show. It's really an honor to have you guys on here. Thanks for having us so much. much. You guys are monsters, and uh, I love this stuff. It's just great. So tell us a little bit. Set us up uh, for this while she's tuning. Yeah, sorry, the baritone tends to go out. So I am using baritone, my lovely uh, Taylor um, limited edition 326 baritone. That's a beauty. Um, it looks like it's rosewood. Thank and you, Tim and Robin, Taylor guitars. <laughs> yes. And uh, we use but this tell song us a little song. bit about set up this song. So this, this song it's called After, after, after Sunday. Sunday, right? They br- uh, uh, Art brought this in. The right, right. So may, maybe the fun, fun thing to talk about is like our, our, uh, how, how we come up to those creative titles. <laughs> it's because we just run out of time and said, hey, we have to like, we have to, we need the title After Sunday. You know, like, we stick to After Sunday. It's, you know, it's you know like, like we need to title it after this coming Sunday, I think, because we had a gig or something, yeah, and then exactly. we just said, all right, screw it. We're just going to call it After Sunday. After Sunday. Kind of fits, right. though. Anyway. Is that your tuner beeping? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, like, I'm, worried. <laughs> I'm looking right. Where did right. I oh. Checking Sorry, my phone. and Tuning for dummies. Anyway, okay. let me real quick. String Revolution, uh, Stringborn is their latest album. I recommend it highly. You heard some of the clips on there. It's just some great stuff, and um, I'm looking forward for the new one. And check them out when they if you if they're playing live. If you're nearby, Carlsbad or in LA, come by and check them out because it's a drill treat. Okay, guys, have a great night, everybody. Mm-hmm.